If you're tired of these promos, regular supporters get the podcast early and ad-free. Just go to donate.bogosity.tv and sign up for Patreon or Subscribestar at any level. Welcome to the Bogosity Podcast for the week of May 3rd, 2020. The podcast that took the B train. This is your host, Shane Killian. Let's hospitalize the news of the bogus. I've made the case that it probably is time to get at least some people back to work, and one way of doing that is if employers can test people for COVID-19, making sure of a safe environment for everyone. Well, that's exactly what podcasting superstar Joe Rogan did, and people are complaining about it. On a recent edition of the Joe Rogan Experience, he mentioned that he was going to get himself tested every few days, and that he was doing the same with his guests. And that episode's guest, Chris Delia, later confirmed that he did indeed get tested prior to appearing on the podcast, as did Brian Callen. And the Twitter mob is actually saying this is a bad thing. Like Rebecca Klein, who tweeted, A close friend, a doctor, presumably had coronavirus but couldn't get tested in NYC. Cool that Joe Rogan is able to test his pals like it's nothing. Well, maybe you should take your complaint to your wonderful governor, not someone who's actually trying to do the right thing. Then there's Morris F. who tweeted, Must be nice to get access to the coronavirus test at will. I have had friends and their children who have been ill with flu systems. He says systems. And high temperatures and were refused the test because the ERs are rationing them. I guess you've reached elitist status. How nice for you. And Sam Lawrence tweeted, How does Joe Rogan have the ability to test for COVID-19 whenever he wants, but there are hospitals all over the U.S. that don't have enough tests? Some, like Destiny Judith, even called it abuse. Quote, Huge fan of Joe Rogan, but hearing him talk about how he's abusing COVID-19 testing kits to test whoever's on his podcast before he interacts with them and taking two tests three days apart at his leisure when people are still struggling to get tested is infuriating. And Jeremy Holt. Did you get your Coronas test for you and your buddies today, Joe? So special you are. And then, of course, there's the inevitable complaint about capitalism, like when Christina Pinkston tweeted, I'm a huge fan, but Joe Rogan's ability to get tested for COVID-19 every three days demonstrates the evil of capitalism in a life-and-death scenario. Good luck getting a test in Detroit. Make it right, Joe. I'm just completely floored at how morons like this think. Well, they don't think that's the issue. The first problem that should immediately be apparent to anyone with more than two brain cells to knock together is that Joe Rogan is in no way depriving others of tests. If you go and buy a big screen TV, you aren't in any way depriving others of getting one. There isn't one less big screen TV in the universe. You're demanding that more big screen TVs get made, and as the market expands, there will be a lot more TVs at lower prices. That is how capitalism works. The problem is that capitalism is not being allowed to act. These tests are being administered by Dr. Abe Malkin for $299, but as he explains, the test isn't FDA approved and therefore can't be used for an official diagnosis, just for peace of mind. And some people get it, like Artorias Da Vinci, who tweeted, Joe Rogan is using tests that aren't FDA approved. Get mad at our government, not a podcast entrepreneur. Tone of anger is misplaced. So glad you dummies don't influence the experience process. Jamal Mercurio pointed out that actually 70 different companies have developed COVID tests that the FDA won't yet allow to be used for diagnoses. Matt P. tweeted, So Vic Berger retweeted an article about Joe Rogan testing his guests with an antibody test and falsely claimed that he was buying up the nasal swab tests for COVID that are currently in short supply. When I not so politely told him to own up to his mistake, this happened. And he provided a screenshot showing that Berger had blocked him. I have to say it again. 
for decades. Statists have assured us that capitalism is not capable of doing things like this and we have to rely on holy government. Well, we relied on holy government. At every single turn, it's been fail, fail, fail. Every single thing you people have been complaining about with capitalism have happened with government. If you're not even going to learn your lesson in the wake of a global freaking pandemic, when will you learn? Ads are annoying, but ad blockers prevent publishers from making money. What if you could support your favorite websites, YouTube creators, Twitch streamers, social accounts, and many more ad-free and without paying anything, and even make some money yourself? It's not a pipe dream, it's airtime. Go to airtime.bogosity.tv and get the browser extension and you'll earn cryptocurrency for the sites you visit. And so will the publisher. This is not a crypto miner. You and the publisher will both get part of the reward from current miners of the BitTube cryptocurrency, with no middleman taking a cut. Even if the publisher hasn't signed up yet, his tube will be put into a dedicated wallet that he can claim upon sign up. You can also use your tube to tip publishers and even purchase products. Airtime monetizes users and publishers with no ads or crypto miners. Go to airtime.bogosity.tv and start making money now. So one thing sensible people have known as ridiculous for decades is movie release windows. Generally this means something like a three to six month gap between the movie's theatrical debut and when it's available for home viewing. In France it's more like three years. And then you have the delays in worldwide releases including region coding of DVDs and Blu-ray discs and things like Netflix having to block streaming of certain shows from other countries as well as VPN connections. The idea is that you're protecting theaters, but really, isn't this a bit like trying to protect horse-drawn coaches from the car industry? Back in the day, there were good reasons for these delays. Film prints were expensive, as was shipping them, and proceeds from one country, generally the US, were used to fund releases in Europe and elsewhere. But today, everything is digital, and theaters simply download the releases, generally incomparable if not lower quality than is available through home streaming. So all of this really is an artificial scarcity that is only occurring because of an IP-supported cartel. Enter COVID. Social isolation means that packed movie theaters have had to give way to direct-to-home releases, such as Trolls World Tour, which opened in the remaining theaters at the same time it was made available online for $20 for a 72-hour rental. In its first three weeks, it made over $100 million in VOD rentals in North America. Comcast NBC Universal CEO Jeff Schell told the Wall Street Journal, quote, The results for Trolls World Tour have exceeded our expectations and demonstrated the validity of PVOD. As soon as theaters reopen, we expect to release movies on both formats. Now, if $20 sounds steep to you, consider that this is a family movie. Even if you're a single parent of two, as I was for nine years, if you take your kids to the movies and you pay $10 per adult and $7.50 per child, that's $25 just for the movie tickets. Then they'll want a drink, popcorn, and a snack, and basically you ain't getting out of there for less than 50 bucks to watch the movie once. A movie that didn't even start on time because you had to sit through half an hour of previews and advertisements. But with this, you can just stay at home. Pay 20 bucks. Pop your own darn popcorn for a nickel. Watch the movie, even pause it for bathroom breaks, and then your little ankle biters can keep watching it over and over and over and over again for three days. It's actually a pretty good deal for that kind of movie. But AMC Theater CEO Adam Aaron obviously doesn't like it. Quote, it is disappointing to us, but Jeff's comments as to Universal's unilateral actions and intentions... Uh, there's another word you gotta love, unilateral. Another one of those words that doesn't really mean anything, but it has scary connotations. I unilaterally decided to have a chicken sandwich for lunch. Anyway. Have left us with no choice. Therefore, effective immediately, AMC will no longer play any Universal movies in any of our theaters in the United States, Europe, or the Middle East. He then stamped his feet and started throwing things. Who wants to bet that this move will hurt AMC a lot more than it'll hurt NBC Universal? 
It's just an entitlement mentality. Apparently, making things cheaper and easier for the viewer is bad, at least as far as it affects his bottom line. Don't you feel, AMC customers, how appreciated you are and how much that company cares about you? Or maybe he's just admitted that the service they provide is so crappy it can't compete with a few hundred dollars in viewing technology from Walmart and a $10 a month Netflix subscription. It doesn't help that their theaters have just gotten crappier over the last couple of decades. I think it's clear that release windows have long outlived any legitimate purpose they might have in a market. But that doesn't mean theaters themselves have. You can watch football games live, yet people still go to the stadiums. You can get music on demand anytime you want, yet people still go to rock concerts. Maybe they should install a giant movie screen over the outfield at Yankee Stadium, or a big IMAX screen in the ceiling of the Astrodome. Hey, I'm just spitballing here, do I have to think of everything? Look, restaurants stay in business even though people cook at home. These alternatives stay in business because they add value to people's lives. AMC, why don't you try offering a superior product at competitive prices? Or is that just not the American way anymore? If you're on the Wi-Fi in a coffee shop or hotel, anyone on that network can get your traffic. Do you really trust all of those strangers? For that matter, do you really trust your ISP? A VPN can protect you from prying eyes, disguise your location, and even foil government sensors. It's essential in this day and age, so go to vpn.pagosity.tv and you'll be taken to BoxPN. Starting at just $2.99 a month, you can get unlimited high-speed connections to VPN servers all over the world, and they don't log connections, so your privacy is assured. Traveling abroad, just VPN home, and don't worry about what those other governments are doing. Back at home, stop your ISP from traffic shaping and messing with the quality internet access you're paying good money for. You can connect from multiple machines at once, including your smartphone or tablet, and it supports all the secure standards, including OpenVPN and SSTP. Bypass sensors and surveillance with your own secure VPN connection. Go to vpn.pagosity.tv. Of course, they all probably would agree about piracy, which is why the U.S. government's United States Trade Representative, or USTR, publishes the Review of Notorious Markets. Basically, sites like the Pirate Bay and RARBG, where people can download unauthorized copies of movies and TV shows. The idea is, with these sites, Section 230 shouldn't apply because they are actively involved with piracy and counterfeiting, two of only three crimes the Constitution permits the federal government to enforce, the third being treason. Of course, when the Constitution was written, piracy only referred to hijacking on the high seas and counterfeiting only to currency, but you can make anything constitutional by rewriting the dictionary. Or you just ignore the Constitution entirely, like they do with the war on drugs. Anyway, this has ended up being one big experiment in scope creep, with domain registrars, hosting companies, and advertisers being included, even though conduit protections absolutely should apply to them. The advertising company is Propeller Ads, and the USTR wrote, Rights holders identify Propeller Ads as providing significant advertising revenue for many popular torrent sites, cyber lockers, and other pirate websites. Propeller Ads has also been linked to serious malvertising operations whereby malware is distributed through online advertisements. On the latter, they have a point. Ads have always been a terrible vector for malware, and people need to protect themselves. But advertisers, domain registrars, and hosting companies should not be required to be unpaid criminal investigators. Which brings me to the most ridiculous company added. Amazon. Amazon isn't supposed to be subject to listing as a notorious market, as it's a U.S. company and the jurisdiction here only applies to foreign actors. But they've gotten around that by listing not Amazon.com, but Amazon.ca, Amazon.co.uk, Amazon.de, Amazon.fr, and Amazon.in. Even though the same products are available at all of these sites. And the problem of counterfeits is much bigger on third-party seller sites such as eBay. Amazon provides a listing service for independent sellers. 
Sometimes these sellers sell counterfeit products. For some reason, they think that Amazon isn't doing enough by simply removing these products and sellers when legally demanded and need to be more proactive. Quote, Rights holders ask that Amazon take additional actions to address their concerns, including by collecting sufficient information from sellers to prevent repeat infringers from creating multiple storefronts on the platforms, making detailed information about the real seller of a product obvious to consumers and right holders. Like I said, unpaid law enforcement. Or maybe they just feel the existing reporting system isn't easy enough to abuse like YouTube's is. Now, Amazon's response was a tiny bit ridiculous, saying it was because of a personal vendetta between Donald Trump and Jeff Bezos. They may find themselves being surprised when the next guy does the same thing. By the way, in case you were wondering, Sci-Hub is still on the list. That still tells you everything you need to know. We live in a world where light bulbs connect to the internet, and recent attacks on them prove that your online security is under threat like never before. Not only your websites, but the internet-enabled devices you buy. And the biggest problem is weak passwords. That's why you need LastPass. LastPass allows you to randomly generate strong, unique passwords on the web and on your internet-enabled devices, all protected by one master password. LastPass sets up in minutes and gives you secure automatic logins throughout the web, synchronizing across all your browsers, all your computers, and even your mobile devices, at home, at work, or on the road. It even securely stores sensitive form data, including credit card numbers, backup sensitive documents, software licenses, Wi-Fi logins, and more. And with LastPass Premium, you can get these benefits on other applications, manage passwords for your entire family, and also get priority customer support. Sign up at password.bogosity.tv for a free month of LastPass Premium. Log in securely everywhere using the last password you'll ever have to remember. Go to password.bogosity.tv and get LastPass now. And now it's time to muzzle this week's biggest bogan emitter. And this week it goes to Harvard University professor Elizabeth Bartolet, who has called for a ban on homeschooling because it's authoritarian. Because banning things is totally how you avoid authoritarianism. The stupid woman said that if kids are educated at home, they might be exposed to the white supremacy and misogyny of their parents. Because that totally isn't where they spend three-fourths of their time anyway. In a Harvard Magazine article, she wrote, I think it's always dangerous to put powerful people in charge of the powerless and to give the powerful ones total authority. So we need to keep an all-powerful government in charge, because that totally makes sense. She also said it violates, quote, their right to be protected from potential child abuse. I don't even know what to say to that. Harvard graduate and homeschooler Carrie McDonald wrote in a letter to the editor, quote, Aside from its biting, one-sided portrayal of homeschooling families that mischaracterizes the vast majority of today's homeschoolers, it is filled with misinformation and incorrect data. She is concerned with families having this power, while I worry about giving that power to government. And in Forbes, policy analyst Mike McShane said, quote, Banning homeschooling would thrust thousands of children who left traditional schools to avoid maltreatment back into the very schools where they were victimized. And called her description of homeschools, quote, lazy stereotypes. In the journal Education Next, Naomi Schaefer Riley called her claims absurd and said they are, quote, Undercut not only by how badly many of our public schools educate students, but also by studies suggesting kids at Catholic schools, for instance, have greater knowledge of civics and levels of civic participation upon graduation. Bartolet repeated the long-debunked myth about homeschoolers being socially isolated, as well as being schooled by religious extremists, and true to her authoritarian state worship, she described it using the phrase, unregulated regime. But as McDonald pointed out, homeschools are very diverse in both demographics and ideology. And maybe that's what she's really worried about. So all of that makes Elizabeth Bartol at this week's Biggest Bogani Emitter. I 
want to tell you about the eyeglasses I've been wearing for years. As people can see on my videos, I have a very strong prescription, which makes glasses more expensive, especially when I need computer glasses, reading glasses, prescription sunglasses, and most expensively, progressive lenses for general everyday wear. To save money while still getting quality glasses, I get them from Fermu. In fact, I just got a pair of progressives with high-index aspherical lenses and a nice pair of frames my wife loves for just over $100. It would have been $500 to get them through my eye doctor. Not only do they look good, the glasses are durable. I've worn many pairs for several years without problems. All orders come with a 30-day return policy, a 3-month warranty, and one-on-one -on -one customer service. Go to Firmu, that's F-I-R-M-O-O dot Bogosity dot TV anytime you need quality glasses at a low price. Once again, that's Firmu dot Bogosity dot TV. And now let's socially isolate this week's Idiot Extraordinary! And this week it goes to California Governor Gavin Newsom, who basically lost the plot when he found that people were going to the beach instead of socially isolating. Reacting to pictures of crowded SoCal beaches, he said, quote, Those images are an example of what not to see, what not to do if we're going to make the meaningful progress we've made the past couple of weeks. The virus is as present and prevalent as it's ever been. It's transmissible as it's ever been. Nothing has changed in that respect. It doesn't take the weekend off. It doesn't take any time off. It is ubiquitous. It is invisible. It remains deadly. Ask the 45 families who lost a loved one in the last 48 hours. Please, please continue physical distancing. The thing is, looking at the pictures, I don't see any elderly or infirmed people. I see young, healthy, low-risk people. And as the experts keep saying, we need the low-risk people interacting with each other so the population can build up herd immunity. Otherwise, you're not solving the problem. You're just hitting the pause button and it's going to pick right back up where it left off. Even though the total number of cases in the state grew to over 43,000, hospitalizations were nearly flat, suggesting that herd immunity is the way to prevent things. None of that stopped Newsom from closing beaches in Orange County. Neighboring counties had already closed their beaches, but Newsom said that Orange County was the problem. Quote, It wasn't just people from that county at that beach, it was people from all over. Wait, you mean closing down places only creates greater concentrations of people elsewhere? Who the thunk? As we've covered, experts have actually been arguing against stay-at-home orders, and if anything, their numbers are increasing. And it isn't just a matter of immunity, it's also about, as we said at the very start, combating the detrimental effects of home isolation, increased depression and anxiety, seasonal effectiveness disorder in the freaking spring, increased drug and alcohol abuse, even increased child abuse and domestic violence. Newsom said that, if this keeps up, his stay-at-home order could continue for months instead of weeks. Or is he just shopping around for a convenient excuse in case his wonderful policies end up being shown to be complete failures? So all of that makes Gavin Newsom this week's... Idiot Extraordinary! Well, that wraps up this, you lousy cork soakers, you have violated my Fargan rights edition of the Gossip City Podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please keep this podcast going by subscribing and supporting in one of several different ways you can find at donate.bogosity.tv, including PayPal, cryptocurrency, or subscribing at Patreon or Subscribestar to listen early and ad-free. Also, please come to discord.bogosity.tv, where you can join the discussion and post a question, statement, news article, or rant. Thank you for listening. Until next time, here's a quote from PJ O'Rourke. Government is a health hazard. Governments have killed many more people than cigarettes or unbuckled seatbelts ever have. The Bogosity Podcast is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution on Commercial Nerd Rib, this 4.0 international license. Bogosity.
ads are annoying, but ad blockers prevent publishers from making money. What if you could support your favorite websites, YouTube creators, Twitch streamers, social accounts, and many more ad-free and without paying anything, and even make some money yourself? It's not a pipe dream, it's airtime. Go to airtime.bogosity.tv and get the browser extension and you'll earn cryptocurrency for the sites you visit. And so will the publisher. This is not a crypto miner. You and the publisher will both get part of the reward from current miners of the BitTube cryptocurrency, with no middleman taking a cut. Even if the publisher hasn't signed up yet, his tube will be put into a dedicated wallet that he can claim upon sign-up. You can also use your tube to tip publishers and even purchase products. Airtime monetizes users and publishers with no ads or crypto miners. Go to airtime.bogosity.tv and start making money now.